Sports. Camera. Action. Hello everybody and welcome to my uh, third vlog, I suppose it would be. Today I'm going to be doing a little bit of a different type of vlog. Instead of making something or covering an event, I'm going to be unboxing. And I know I've done some unboxing videos in the past. For example, I did some with the honeycomb yolk versus the CH products yolk. Today I'm going to be unboxing my pilot gear. Now what does that mean? Well, I ordered gear that I'm going to need for my flight training. And I'm going to show you what those are, why I chose the pieces that I did, and why maybe I didn't buy some other items uh, just yet in my training process. So let's go ahead and jump into it. I'm going to turn the camera down and we're going to check out the gear that I bought. Alright, so let me grab my uh, shipment. And it's a box. Fantastic. It's just a box. Um, inside this box is all the goodies. So let's go ahead and open it up here. Um, I've not opened it up yet. I just cut the tape. So we have a white box in here. So we'll take this, set this aside for now. And my, my flight computer, which I'll get into that in a moment. Um, knee board. Uh, this looks like my logbook cover, um, carrying case, we'll get into that in a moment. And some paperwork we don't need, uh, some more paperwork we don't need. And, ooh, here we go. Rotary plotter, ooh, fun. All right, so let's get into it, uh, into these items here. We'll start from the top of the last I just pulled out. So this is the SA um, Rotary Plotter. So what this is used for is for navigating, utilizing um, your sectionals, your actual paper sectionals, and using those and actually being able to plot. So you have nautical miles, you have uh, getting all different types of ways of measuring your distance, you have your Right here you have your degree plotter so you can actually say from this point you know i want to go this direction you can actually line it all up nice and neat utilizing these straight edges um, statute miles are in here uh, it just it saves a lot of time when you're trying to you know calculate things on the go maybe you're up in the aircraft you're in cruise 3500 feet whatever it may be and you're trying to figure out uh, i need to readjust my plan. I need to go, instead of going from point A to point B, I now need to go from A to C. Uh, this allows you to quickly do that without trying to, you know, guesstimate or anything like that. This will give you quick and accurate um, navigational information. Um, so yeah, so that's what this is. It's really self-explanatory. Um, use it for VORs and all kind of stuff. Um, so this can be really nice to use and have on hand just in case I do have to go back to the old handy dandy sectionals um, which I'll get into in a moment of why I decided to go with paper sectionals. Um, along with that is my knee board. Uh, this is a VFR knee board by again but also by ASA. I found them to have some of the highest rated products. Um, so take that out of the package, set the package aside and it's just a simple you know elastic velcro uh, knee board, metal knee board, but this is where it gets kind of cool. On the actual knee board itself is a lot of information. So you have everything from a crosswind component, um, diagram, let me see if I can get you guys to you can see a little better, there we go. Crosswind component diagram, you have light gun signals, very handy because it's, you know, you don't use these all the time. It's not something that you would commonly use, but this is important to have in case you have a radio failure. Um, pilot weather report, this kind of gives you like a, a basic, um, uh, what you want to call it, uh, a basic template when you're giving a PIREP. Um, you don't have to do this by the book, but it's very useful. There's a template there. Um, emergency codes, uh, different types of unicoms and all kind of stuff that you can utilize uh, to help you uh, common communication VFR frequencies and that nature in case you need to contact um, somebody or I need to signal an emergency or something like that. You have also your phonetic alphabet. Let's see if I can get a better picture there. 
phonetic alphabet. You have your Morse code identifiers right there, which is really neat and handy to have. Let's say your radio is not transmitting your voice. Well, guess what? Now you can use just your clicks on your microphone and transmit a message if you need to. Um, magnetic course, if you are cruising altitudes, I mean, you can do all different kinds of things, uh, your ceilings, all of your regulations on um, night flying, day flying with VFR, um, IFR conditions, all that kind of stuff. It's all mentioned right here. Just a nice little useful tool in case you do have to reference it. Uh, but nice and handy. It's accidentally stopped the video for a second, but um, nice and handy. It's metal, so it's, it's really nice um, to have. We're gonna probably use this a bunch during training. Uh, so I'll set that aside. And then we'll move on to the flight computer. Now you guys might be thinking, oh, flight computer, right? So your FMC of your Boeing 737 um, and that kind of thing. No, that is not what I'm talking about here. Uh, this is your old fashioned um, E6B flight computer, uh, also by ASA. I seem to buy all ASA stuff. I just seem to have good quality products here. Um, this is your flight computer. Uh, if you're looking at this and going, what in the world am I looking at? This actually allows you to do all these types of little calculations uh, on this little, this device. I mean, it seems crazy and confusing. I understand that. Um, there's a reason why it comes with uh, an entire uh, instructional handbook here. Uh, it's, there's a reason for that. So lots of information. I'm gonna be doing a lot of reading on this. So that I, when I get into the aircraft, I'm not lost and using this. I don't want to use something. I don't want to get into an aircraft, try to use something I'm not familiar with. That is really bad habit and asking for a disaster. Um, but this is going to allow me to do a lot of quick calculations, uh, fuel time calculations, a bunch of different stuff on the fly without trying to just rely on my head doing the math, which I still need to be able to do. But this is like a, uh, a quick way of making those uh, conversions adjustments without having to rely just on my head to make those conversions. So um, going to be useful as well in conjunction with the plotter. Uh, both of these are gonna be extremely useful uh, for if I have to make any type of cross country flight and have to make detours or do any calculations on the fly. Again, instructional book, lots of information. Gonna have to read up on this. Uh, 38 pages, sounds fun. All right, so that's that. Uh, it does come with a little handy dandy um, little binder thing here. Um, so I guess I could put this stuff in here, uh, and maybe, yeah. So yeah, that's all right. Cool. So moving on, my Norl, uh, flight, uh, what do you call it? Flight log, uh, shoot, log book. And inside of it, they happened to went ahead and put the log book inside of it, which was nice for them. Um, I went with the Jepson, of course, and this will be my log book. This is where I will put all of my information, uh, all, log, all of my flights uh, right here on a logbook. So cool, just a logbook, not expensive, like 10 bucks. Um, so, but yeah, so I got a padded, you may ask, why did I get a logbook cover? Well, I don't want to damage it, right? And I have to keep this in the aircraft with me. Uh, as a student pilot, you have to keep your logbook in the aircraft with you. So I wanted something that in case it got bumped around, and you know, I don't want it to get damaged, obviously. Along with that, I have to put my medical certificate, which will go right here, as well as my pilot certificate, uh, student pilot certificate. All that has to go in with, with me in the aircraft. Um, that is FAA regulations. I have to maintain that with me at all times as a student pilot. So I wanna have something with me in the aircraft that'll keep that safe, as well as uh, keep everything together. I don't wanna lose it so that's what that is for and second to last thing here take that packaging put it over here this is a david clark uh headset um bag that's pretty much all it is it's just a headset bag made in china wonderful just like like what i want um, but anyway so it's just david clark bag all it does is hold your headset that you'll be utilizing. So I wanted something to keep mine, of course, damage free. I don't want to get something and then damage it and jack it up. So that's what that's for. Set that aside as well. 
And then on to the most expensive thing I bought. And hopefully the thing I'll enjoy the most. My headset. My David Clark Company headset. Um, this is a very common headset. It is used all over the place uh, by flight schools and um, similar. I do know that some people uh, prefer things like Speedlight and Bose, and those are both really, really, really good headsets. Uh, but I didn't want to shell out $1,000 right off the bat for a headset when I didn't even know how often I'll be flying after I get my pilot's, excuse me, pilot's license. So went ahead, bought the handy dandy David Clark. Um, I think, I remember, which one is this exactly? I don't remember which one it is. Um, but it's one of the, not the most expensive one, it's definitely not the cheapest one. I kind of went mid-range here. Um, because I, I wanted to get something that's good, high quality, but not something that's going to break my bank here. Um, and this is what they call passive. Get this stuff off here. It's a passive headset, uh, passive noise canceling headset. And I'll explain what that is in a second. Whoop, there goes a little thing here. Let's get that back on there. Get that back on there. I accidentally popped it off if I can get it back on it doesn't come off that easily it doesn't go on that easily either all right there we go perfect all right so we get that out of there get this cardboard plastic out of there um, take this little tag off do, do, do. If I can. Try not to mess anything up in case for some reason something doesn't work, I can send it back. All right, so put that over there. All right, perfect. And got some warranty information, some uh, little promotional things. Thank you. Some pamphlets of instructions, volume control. Um, this is the H10-13A. Uh, if you can see that or not. Yeah, H10-13A. That's what it is. So, um, cool. Let me get this out of the way. Just the box here. It does come with a five-year limited warranty, so if there is some type of issue with the headset itself, then uh, they will, of course, take care of it. So, what do I mean by passive noise canceling? So, Bose and Lightspeed both use active noise canceling, and David Clark also makes some active noise canceling headphones, um, headsets. Passive basically utilizes just some type of noise dampening um, type of material inside the headphones itself to dampen the noise, and then also a microphone, a lot of fo focus on the microphone, making sure it only picks up your voice and not all the noise and air in the area. So they use a, they, David Clark uses a gel um, cushion, ear cushion here. Um, I don't know if you can see it, but if I press in and release, it slowly pushes back out. And if you could feel it, it feels like gel. I mean, that's what it feels like. And that, that right there stops a lot of the noise because where you get most of your noise is between your head. Imagine this being my head and this is obviously the right in between those two, that's where you get your noise. So you want something that's really good at stopping the noise right there. And then obviously you want this to have some type of noise reduction in there as well. Um, so that's passive. And this is also nice and squishy up here, which is gonna feel nice on my head. Um, but that's passive, okay? So that's what passive, uh, passive noise reduction is like. Active noise reduction takes the outside, um, a lot of places, a lot of things use noise reduction now, active noise reduction. Um, your Apple iPod, your, um, what do you call those things? Ear pods, Apple ear pods use active noise reduction. Amazon Echoes use active uh, noise reduction. What it does is basically it takes the sound, it reads the sound, Bose uses active on their headsets, regular headsets, takes the sound, and counteracts those noises with other sound, dens them out, and then allows you to only hear what you need to hear, thus saving your hearing, 
preventing you from hearing loss as well as giving you high quality sound. So those are generally going to be a little bit better than passive, but passives are still really good. And this cost me 320 bucks for this pair of headsets. So um, better not fail me. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm gonna be using for my training here. It's really cool. And of course you have the standard double um, pin connector here. One's for your microphone and one is for your headphone. And if you ever are wondering, how do you know which one to plug in to which if it doesn't have any type of identifier, which this does not. It has no identifier, so I'll show you here. I hit the button again accidentally, um, but I'll show you here. No identifier on the actual things themselves saying what they are. So that's not very helpful, right? Well, if you look at the tips here, you'll see one single ring and then two rings right here. What that lets you know is that this is your microphone and this is your headphones because it's sending it to your left and your right channel. This is just picking up one, just your voice. So that's what the difference is there. And that's pretty common. This is gonna be your stereo. And you're gonna have at least two rings and mono, you're gonna have one ring uh, because you just have one hot and you don't have to worry about anything else. So anyway, yeah, so that's basically how you uh, determine uh, that. So yeah, this is basically what I have purchased and I'm looking forward to getting into the air, of course, getting flying and uh, testing out all this gear. It's gonna be a lot of fun, I know it will be. And if you're asking why I decided to go with paper charts and you know, uh, pa for paper kneeboard, um, these classic tools for my training, and when I could easily just get an iPad, right? And get ForeFlight and have all of this, literally all of this at my fingertips on a single iPad. The reason why I decided to go with paper was because what if that iPad dies? What if I lose connection? What if it breaks? Well, then I have to use paper. And if I don't know how to use these tools, then I'm going to screw myself in the future because at some point that iPad will die. At some point that iPad will break and then I'll need to be using these feet, these tools right here. So I figured not only are they cheaper to start off with, but they're going to give me a better understanding and a better base to actually pilot and get my pilot uh, proficiency up. I don't want to just be competent, I want to be a proficient pilot. Once I've mastered these and I understand these, then and only then am I going to get an iPad and get ForeFlight, which I do plan on getting, and learn that as best I can, all the ins and outs of that thing, and utilize that as my primary and this as my backup. But yeah, so that's why I went with paper charts first. I want to learn them the best I can, and then from there, move forward into the actual newer technology, safer and better technology, but so is technology, and technology can fail. So there you have it, unboxing of the gear I'll be utilizing during my flight training. I'm going to do my best to capture flight training as I begin. I won't begin until probably August, but uh, I'm really excited for it. As many of you know, I've already gotten my medical certificate. I did a practice FAA exam and I made a 93%, which I'm not satisfied with. I won 100% on my FAA written exam. So I'm going to continue to study over the next couple weeks and then look like taking the test towards the end of July before I actually get into the aircraft. So I hope you enjoy this video and hopefully I have been showing you guys more behind the scenes content of what it's like to start moving into the realm of starting to train from being a flight simulator pilot to moving into a real pilot and starting to get into that real world understanding and train to be a real world pilot. So thanks for watching and I hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time up in the sky.